So we're back. I know I'm a little washed out. The sun is right here, but I need the window open. Just bear with me. Um, we are about to start sewing some of these um, patterns that I had cut out the other day. If you didn't watch the last vlog, you can see where I'm at with this, but um, I'm about to start sewing these up. Honestly, I'm a little bit off my A game because I forgot how I put together one of these swimsuits. So usually it's the same way with like almost every swimsuit design, but I tweak this pattern. So I'm gonna have to figure that out as I go. But um, other than that, everything is really basic, really simple. So I'm about to not talk through this part of the video. Can we kind of, you can watch me. Maybe I'll talk, I don't know. I usually like to like pop on something on my um, iPad or as I'm watching somebody else's vlog right now. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But um, I'm about to get started. So follow along. So for right now, I'm just pinning, well not pinning, but placing my fabrics right size together. Um, so when it's time for me to sew them, it's easy. So I did that for the front and back pieces. I'm not gonna show you guys like the whole thing because my design, but <laughs> um, for most swimsuits, you should be putting, you know, right sides together. And if you can't tell what the right side and the wrong side of a fabric is, all you have to do is really go to one side and pull it, like stretch it a little bit. And one side, even on shiny fabric like this one, the inside is more dull. So the dull side is the inside and the shiny side is obviously the outside. But if you can't tell, cause sometimes it does play games with your eyes, all you have to do is pull it. Usually the right side of the fabric will fold in towards you because of how it's literally put together, how the fabric is together. And you can see it, it'll just ravel a little bit forward. So you know the right side is opposite of like not facing you. So yeah, I hope that helped. Like right now the sun, the way that it's beaming, it could literally play tricks with me right now. But I do know that this is the right side of the fabric. So that goes down. And I also know that this is, this is the right side. So, you know, just a little, a little tip. And also the colors do vary. So usually if it's like a solid color blue, the inside is usually a little bit, it looks a little bit lighter to the eye. So that's another way to show you. So I'm about to just sew these up really quick. Again, these are samples. So I'm trying to, I'm tweaking one of this sample on both of these bikinis that I, or swimsuits that I'm doing. Um, so I'm sewing it a little bit different and I'm adding something to this one like I did, like I'm gonna do to the other one as well. So, you know. And these clips, if you guys don't have clips like this, you need to get some. These are, to me, these are so much better than like the needles. I still use needles on certain things, but for a sample, this is the way to go. And I can tell already this is cut a little off about just a tiny tad bit. That's okay, my surgery will clean that up for me. I'm just clipping the like shoulders and stuff right now. I'm not doing too much. Is it blurry? I'm sorry that I'm blurry, you guys. It's just, my camera's going in and out and I don't know why. I think I wanna upgrade to another lens again. Not sure just yet, I'm still on the fence about it. All right, so this is fine for right now. I just need to start sewing and do the corrections later. And next to me, I have like my seam ripper. I have the little tweezer things just in case I need to like re-thread this, which usually I always have to do. Um, my clips have a measuring tape. I don't need this right now. And I have my fabric weights as well as my bag full of swimwear elastics. I use the darker one for this color. 
it's like a gray black but it's my swimsuit elastics oh i'm saying what did i just do so yeah let's start sewing nope there we are And by the way, I showed you guys my Crocs because I don't like to sew with just like my socks and pressing on like the, um, the presser foot. For some reason, it just feels weird. <laughs> so I always make sure I have on a shoe, some sort of shoe or sandal. And right now I'm holding it. If you don't know, if you're not really good at sewing, Make sure you clip your whole thing, no matter how close it is, clip or pin the whole thing. I'm holding mine because I can guide mine like naturally, but you don't want to mess that up because you can totally mess up measurements if you don't know how to clip down fabric or hold fabric. Did not have my scissors so wow I was just testing this thread color it's like a blue I have two lighter blues one darker blue and a brown and I usually keep the brown on the last one because it's usually the straight stitch when it comes to the serger but wow this literally looks the same color I thought I was gonna have to get a darker blue but it blends like Perfectly. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but okay. That just made me really happy. So yeah, let's continue. <laughs> Like that is just amazing how perfect that matches. I really thought I was gonna have to switch it out to like the darker blue thread. And this is literally perfect. Oh my God. That is amazing. One thing that I forgot about when I made this swimsuit the first time was how much elastic I burned through for this one particular swimsuit. The Lotus swimsuit, if you already have it, then I'm sure you love it, but um, I go through so much elastic because, and if you didn't know, this is what happens when you use swimsuit elastic. It's so, it's like dusty. It's not dust, actual dust, but it's like rubbery. So it leaves off this weird rubber-like, you know, feel. Like, this is what swimsuit elastic looks like, guys. If you've never seen it, um, hold on. It's like rubber. It's not like regular elastic. See how this is like, it's literally like rubber. It is rubber, but it's rubbery. So that way, and it doesn't like, it doesn't break down in water, like in chlorine and stuff. This takes forever. Like you can have a swimsuit for years on years and years before you'll ever see any damage to 
this part in particular because it's sewn in once it gets sewn in it's tight it's nice and it literally stretches with you it doesn't like dig into your skin and it's just top tier and I got this one in this is like a grayish a dark like charcoal gray color and the other one is white I use the white one for my lighter swimsuits and I use this one for my darker swimsuit so that way you know can't see nothing but right now see how it leaves I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick it up but you see how it barely touched the inside and has this on it it literally wipes right off but it's a mess every time I use it I'm always like oh so I'm just about to sew all the elastic pieces and usually on swimsuits especially if you're sewing them yourself even if it's at a manufacturer the design process is the same you um, get your design they do the cut and sew process and during the sewing process the elastic goes on obviously when they're making each piece to the bikini and usually where there is stitching like this like the um the overlock stitch when you usually if it's something like this usually elastic is attached to it if not i, I don't know but <laughs> um usually elastic is attached to the main stitches according to like where your body would stretch so even on those like triangle bikini tops there's elastic like on the part that goes right here because that's the part that has the most tug and pull um on just the bikini bottom it's usually on like the leg part like the leg portion the leg hole is usually right there as well as the back piece same leg hole is usually on the waist if you have a waist that is all the way around is usually a thicker elastic um if you have like the tie kind, obviously a strain goes through, but not. And then elastic also goes on to all the, usually all the straps. It should go on all the straps because that will ensure when someone pulls it and ties it, it doesn't pop all the threads. The elastic is literally holding the threads together and making your swimsuit much better, much better quality. So I'm about to start sewing this elastic on and I'm finding something to watch on Netflix I, I when I get into like this sewing zone I just like to have something playing I can literally go through like eight movies just sewing swimsuits and I've done that before but <laughs> sometimes I'll be like wait what just happened I missed the whole movie because I'm so focused on like sewing the swimsuits together but I don't have anything to watch right now I don't know what to watch I was watching this like cooking um this cooking show but uh I'm sorry this is so annoying and light you guys um I hope that's a little better. I was watching this cooking show. It's a cooking competition because I love cooking. That's like my second favorite thing to do aside from like design. Um, I cook. I know how to cook very well. Um, so I like to watch competitions because I think I'm a chef, low key. And I'd be like, oh, I need to go to the grocery store and get all kinds of stuff that probably ain't even at the grocery store. <laughs> so, you know, it's fun though. And right now, it sucks because I don't have a Trader Joe's close to me. I'm so used to, I was so used to shopping at Trader Joe's before I moved way out here. But the closest Trader Joe's is like 45 minutes away. I think I'm just gonna take a trip on the weekend when it's not so much traffic, probably on the sun, well, Saturday. I might go on Saturday. Cause I am on, like I said, if you watched the last video, I'm in a calorie deficit and I need to get a better selection of produce. And it's great at this grocery store right here, close to my house because everything is like um pretty much is local we have a lot of farms around here and where i live at we're known for like how fresh our food is and how locally sourced it is because again there's so many different farms and we get the best of the best so i'm not worried about that but the produce is my concern it's because i be wanting certain stuff in certain packaging and they don't have it so whatever i i i, I digress um yeah, let me start sewing this, okay? For real. I'm, I'm tripping. I'm, I'm wasting a lot of time. Let me start sewing. And when you sew the elastic, another tidbit for you guys. Sewing elastic is not difficult. You literally place the elastic right over the seam of where you just sewed at. And it goes right there. And it's just another stitch. So technically, it's a doubled right now. If you have an elastic sewing foot, I still have not found the elastic sewing foot for this machine. I ordered one and it was the wrong one. So I have to find the exact one and that would make life like a million times better because this will be able to just go into the, it will, it will get 
like a feed in, it will get fed in. So you don't have to keep doing like double steps. Like this can all be done at once. I can do it at once because I'm really good at guiding it, but I don't want to because I'm making an example. But with the little piece that attaches to the sewing machine, it's just one little swipe and it goes straight through. It's perfect. I'll try to find it and link it below for you guys so you guys know what it looks like. And if you have, you know, an overlock machine, then I highly suggest you order it for real. I haven't found it yet for this one. But uh, when I track it down, that's going to cut my production time in half. So yeah, let me just sew this. Let me concentrate. Mm. The only the only issue I have with sewing this elastic down on here is sometimes when I put it right at the needle, it'll skip over the front part, which is not a problem because it ends up getting folded anyway, but it just bothers me because I'm a perfectionist when it comes to like sewing my things. Because ultimately, you guys are gonna get it, you know? Now, I ain't got time for customer feedback. I'm like, girl, that elastic was not sewn on right. I'll be like, it wasn't me. You know how that go. <laughs> See, like how I just did that little. So I take the thread in the back and I give it a little boom, a little. I just pull the thread a little bit so it doesn't gather because it is a, it's kind of thick, so. And I just do that. And when I'm sewing it, I'm not yanking this. I'm not pulling it back really like tight. I honestly don't have to pull it back at all. I just give it a little bit of a stretch. So when you put it on, it has a, a little bit of a tighter fit um, on your body, you know? So I just give it a little, a very, very little bit of a stretch as it's going through the serger. And before it goes all the way through, I just cut it and then that's it. And you see, you see how it's, well, I don't know how well you can see that, but it is on there. It's perfectly lined up. I didn't cut off any extra fabric on the serger. It's on there and I don't know if you can tell. Let me show you this. Let me show you the other side really quick because I think you can tell differently. So this is the side without the thread, right? So you hold it up. You see how it's still stretchy because this is a four-way stretch fabric, but it doesn't have that little, that little snug type thing. And on this side, the side where I pulled the elastic just a little bit, see how it has that little kind of ruffle gather? It's a gather, it's not gonna be noticeable when you flip over, but it's gonna feel, you can feel a huge difference just by tugging on that um, elastic just a little bit because once this goes on my body, it's gonna like hug the booty in the right way, okay? So, just a heads up and always make sure you guys sew the elastic on the same side. So if you sew it on this side, you don't want to take the other side and sew the elastic on the other side. You want to make sure the elastic is on the same side because ultimately when you, if you were to flip this over, and you did another over stitch, like a over stitch on the side. If the elastic is on different sides, the fold is going to be slightly different. You know, like just just slightly. So yeah, let me let me finish this. I'll be back. I just turned on Shooter. I can watch this a million times because Mark Wahlberg is a great actor. Let me, let me finish this. Oh my God, I keep taking breaks. Dang, back up some, y'all. Could you, could you back up? Give me 50 feet. I'm so excited, it's almost done.
Okay, so. Honestly, you know one of the real reasons why I really want a manufacturing shop, my own manufacturing company, because I cannot wait to hand off a bunch of straps to someone who actually signed up to sew straps. Because when I tell you, it's not the design part that's difficult for me. It's the last minute things like straps that really I could just skip over. I can, I can go without this. If there was another alternative to doing this, I promise you I'd take it. It's nice when it all comes together, but I just don't have time to be doing this. Like this is not my life. Especially this part, the turning them. I'm glad these are this size because I've done smaller straps before. And let me tell you, it is the worst flipping them inside out. All right. Okay, so I finished sewing. Just trying to flip this to the right side. Well, I'm not finished sewing, but I finished this, the main parts. There we go. There we are. Perfect. And then I just do quality checks, making sure like all the straps are looking the same. All the seams are going the right way, which they are. Make sure the bottom, especially where like the gusset area is, is even and it is. And then all I have to do now is sew the back piece and attach the strap that goes around the waist. And this one is like complete. And I think I'm in love with this color, so. Oh yeah, yeah, perfect. So, this color is just to die for, you know? Oh, I also have to add the tag. I'm gonna add the tag to this one, the string to this one, and then I'm gonna start on the other one, but you know, we'll see. If you guys wanna see what this looks like, I'll insert a picture right here. This is the swimsuit. Um, I just made it in a different color. Um, and I also adjusted it as well. I, did, I made this a little bit more lower, the neckline, just, just a little, little bit. And then I also made the back part of the swimsuit, I made it a little bit more adjustable because I remember when I first did these, people were saying um, they wish they were just a tad bit more full coverage when you, when you stretch it, like open, because these are adjustable bottoms. So I made the back parts a little bit, little bit more wide. So when you, if you do wanna make it full, more full coverage, you can. And I also made the straps longer and I made them a little bit, just, just a tad bit more um, wide as well. So that way, you know, it doesn't like dig into your skin. So yeah, that's what I did for that. But I'm gonna finish this start on the other one this surprisingly sewing the swimsuit together only took maybe like if I wasn't recording it would have only took me like 20 minutes to complete like completely sew this the straps alone took about 10 minutes but um, sewing this and putting it together is super fast that's why I was able to sew a lot of these in the beginning um, now this one on the other hand that's gonna take a while that's gonna take probably like 45 minutes to sew 
just because I tweaked that one a lot more than I did to this one. But <sighs> that's all I'm doing today, y'all. I'm just sewing. But I wanted to show you guys um, a little bit oops, of the process and talk to you guys about some tips. Um, as far as the, before anyone asks, because I know somebody's going to ask, the swimsuit or swimwear elastic, um, you can find it in a lot of places. Um, you can go on Etsy. There's tons of sellers on there. Well, not tons. There's a few sellers on there that have swimwear elastic. Just type in swimwear elastic and you can find someone. It's very affordable. Um, I buy these like in large quantities. I did purchase from somebody on Etsy before, but they emailed me um, at the beginning of the year and I forgot to like go back into that email. They don't, they're not on Etsy anymore. Like the first person I bought the swimwear um, elastic from, they're not on there anymore. They have their own thing going on. So if I find her email and I go and find her website, I'll link it if she's still selling the elastic um, in the description box. But if not, you can still go on Etsy. There are still people on Etsy selling swimwear elastic. They have it in this gray charcoal color, which is the dark one. They have it in white. And some people, it's very hard to find the neutral one. They have one that's kind of like tan. It's like slightly darker, obviously, than the white one. But the tan one works really well if you can find it with bright color swimsuits as well. Because some swimsuit fabrics, if you're using like a, a fabric that's really kind of see-through, you're not going to want to use the white one, obviously. You want to use the tan one because the tan one is more neutral and it blends more with different, like, more lighter fabrics. Um, this light looks crazy. I'm sorry, y'all, but uh, what else? Um, oh, yeah, just go in my description box. All of my sewing supplies, including what sewing machines I use, um, like everything, like all of the, most of the stuff that I talk about on this channel, as far as like sewing supplies or any of my tutorials that I've done, everything is linked in my Amazon um, store. So you just click that link. You can see my desk setup stuff. You can see my sewing supplies. You can see a couple of beauty products that I recommend. Um, all of that's down there. As far as fabric goes, I get my fabric from um, my vendor. I've talked about them before. It's Rex, R-E-X Fabrics. They're in Los Angeles. Um, you can, they're wholesale, so you, you need a wholesale license, but, um, they do ship and they're really good about their communication. Um, online, you can't just go and order the fabric. You have to, I have a account manager with Rex because I order fabrics all the time and you will get appointed an account manager, someone who's over your account once they have all your information. But, um, Go on there and like what, if you find the fabric, there's like a section next to like the fabric where it says like contact or something. You can contact them and then during business hours, somebody will get back to you within like a day or two and they'll ask you, you know, a bunch of questions about whatever fabric that you're interested in. And then you just go from there. You start building up that conversation tell them what you want. Tell them they're going to ask you about wholesale, all that stuff. So, you you know, I mean, you know how to take care of your own business, but ultimately that is what you would do. You set up an account with them and um, go from there. Um, I highly recommend their fabrics, they're really good. They specialize in swimwear fabrics, like dancewear fabrics, athletic fabrics, because they're typically kind of like the in the same realm. So um, that's where I get mines from. I order mines. I usually just drive down and pick them up because it's I'm right next to like LA. So I just drive down, pick them up, come back home, um, instead of them shipping them. Also, because when they ship them, you're not gonna get them in like the rolls um, they're going to fold it down and however they get it to you, they're going to fold it down. If it's like a big, big order, obviously it's going to come in rolls, but that's going to cost a lot to ship. So with me, I order and then I go down and then I just let my trunk down and I slide all the fabric as much as I can inside my car. I've learned that I need to take a truck when I go down there because those fabric rolls be big. So that's why I can't hold fabric up here because I've got to keep them downstairs so they can stand up and all that stuff. But that's another reason why I'm looking for a studio. I need like a work space, like a studio showroom type thing. But I don't know if I want to do that before I do, before I get my manufacturing company in order. I don't know. I wanted to turn this room into a full studio, but I would have, I wanted to convert this bed because nobody sleeps in the fucking bed. So I wanted to convert this bed into a Murphy bed. So if there were guests, 
I doubt it. But if there were, they could just pull the bed down. So this don't have to be down all the time. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of stuff that I'm trying to do because the next room over here, on the other side of this wall, is like gaming stuff. It's like a gaming room in there. So I'm not gonna change that because my nephew absolutely loves it. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. But as far as everything else, I'm trying to turn this into a Murphy bed. I don't wanna do it on my own. I hire somebody to do it. I can just order the parts and turn this into a Murphy bed and then this can be converted into an actual working studio. I can keep the tables out. I could bring the fabrics up, um, you know, all that jazz. But anyways, that's it for now. I'm gonna close this out. I know this is gonna be kind of long again. Um, but I think you guys like, for some reason, yesterday's vlog did really, really well. I have like a slow climbing channel. If you don't know what that means, it's a slow climbing channel. Literally like, I can post a video today and it probably won't gain traction until like four days later. <laughs> so, um, I'm fine with it. It's always been that way. But, um...